All right, we start with our last week uh, game against uh, North Carolina Central. Um, it was a big football game. Uh, we knew the three-time defending champs was coming in here. We knew that it was going to be tough. And um, we knew it was going to be a 60-minute game. It's, it's been like all our games. Teams with the uh, last team with the ball is going to have a chance to win the game. And um, it, was, it was no different this past week. Um, I thought the defense played great, uh, giving up only eight first downs, five passing, and two rushing. And one of those rushing first downs was a fake punt. Um, and uh, three of those passes were long passes. Uh, one on the crossing route with Mr. Tackle, another one down the field for a touchdown, another one they guess threw it up down the middle to the number two, and he came down with it. And so that was three of their five first downs passing. Um, so it, you know, I thought the defense played tremendous. They only gave up seven points. We gave up offense, uh, gave up seven points too. So I, I just thought the defense played tremendous. Uh, they played well enough for us to win. Um, special teams were solid. Uh, offense, we moved the ball uh, up and down the football field. Uh, especially early, we had some good field position, and we come punching in in the red zone. Had to settle for field goals, and um, and then you know we dominate in the game in six zip, and uh, then we um, get a batted ball, and they intercept and they run it back in for ten yards, and and I thought that was just a, such a big play, uh, momentum wise in the football game. It kind of just took all the energy out of the stadium and and our team, and gave them all the energy that you know they've been dominated, and now. Look up at the scoreboard, they up seven to six, and, and that was just so deflating. Uh, but the guys kept fighting, kept playing, and, um, and you know, we had a chance at the end. We went down and, and got in the red zone again and with a chance to score there from the seven yard line and caught a little fade route to Chase Powell. And um, for whatever reason, he threw it a little inside. You know, he needed to throw it on his outside shoulder, and he threw it to his inside shoulder, and the guy just turned around and the ball was right there. So. They kind of ended ended it for that, but uh, you know we got we got to uh, keep our head up, keep fighting, um, try to finish out six and two, and um, you never know. Uh, three four years ago, we had five teams tied for first place at six and two. So we just got to take care of what we can take care of, and that's uh, Sacramento State this week and Howard next week on Senior Day, and uh, see where the chips fall. What did you see in Howard this fall in, in your evaluation? Of who? Of South Carolina State. Oh, yeah, they got a great defense. Uh, you know, Darius Leonard, uh, defense player of the year the last two years, and um, probably going to be defense player of the year this year. Uh, if not, he'd be run up. But uh, uh, they led by that defense. That defense has always been good, and it, and it still is. Um, they're still trying to find their way a little bit on offense with playing different quarterbacks. And, and really, if they want to run some option or if they want to throw the ball. Um, so, um, you know, we just hope that continues one more week. They struggle on offense and because we know that defense is going to be tough and it's going to be tough to score points on them. Um, we got to try to get seven points when we get in the red zone instead of selling for field goal attempts and field goals. So um, they they South Carolina State. They're a well-coached team, and they're going to play hard. Uh, we got to go to Orangeburg. It's going to be tough to beat them in Orangeburg. It's tough to beat anybody on the road in this conference, and uh, especially uh, Buddy Pugh coach team. Norfolk State it sort of dictated a running approach, and then in this game you sort of came out with the passing. Um, I, you feel like you can do either, I'm sure. Is it, is it, do you feel like you're getting that balance? I mean, not the, necessarily the play calling, but the, the, the balance that you want in the running game and the passing game? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, probably on the year, we're pretty close to being 50 50, probably 55 45. Um, this past game, we threw the ball 48 times, we ran it. 31, but what the um, average fan don't understand is probably 10 of those was RPOs, run pass options. And so if the quarterback would have handed those off, it probably would be like 40 40 instead of 48 31. But he pulled them and looked to throw the ball, and guess what? He didn't even throw the ball. He, he took a sack or ran out of the pocket and got tackled. So, um, you know. He has to understand or have a better understanding. That, and that's my job to make sure that he understands on RPOs that if you're not going to hand it off, once you pull it, you got to throw it because the line is still blocking for a running play and therefore guys come free. And so if you're going to pull it, you got to pull it and throw it immediately. You can't pull it and hold it. And uh, that's what he's been doing. So he's got to be 
a little bit clearer on his read, um, who he's reading, and if they're a man, we don't want to throw the flat, we want to throw the go route. And then when they're in zone, and that guy steps up, then you want to throw the flat or throw the slant behind him. So uh, we just got to do a little bit better job of coaching him up, getting him to understand a little bit better on those RPOs, what we want him to do. It seems like um, Kenzie's really run well the last two games especially. Um, he was, did it take him a little bit of time to sort of get his, uh, get his sea legs back to say? I think so, Dave. I think he had knocked off some dust, you know. Um, he, you know, he's before, I mean, he had real game action, and he's been hurt. You know, he's hurt last year and hurt the year before that. So, um, you know, it's been like two years, you know, and he just had to, bam, knock off the dust and, and get back going and get back in the groove of, of playing football and running back and getting tackled and getting hit again. And then we didn't use him as much. Uh, early in the season, neither. We use Yaki a lot more, and uh, now we're using him a little bit more than he's got the rust knocked off. So I think a little bit combination of both. Are you surprised by how much power he has? No. no. He showed it the first time we went contact, full contact, against our guys, um, against Brendan Cole. Uh, Brendan Cole came flying down from the safety position, had a full head of steam, and McKenzie just ran right through him. And uh, I mean, the guys went crazy on both sides of the ball. Everybody went crazy. Like, Oh my God, you know, and uh, and then he had another play right after that, about three plays after that, another um, another big play where he just bam, bam ran over the safety. So we we knew the power was there. Now he didn't show that the first four or five games, Richie, and I told him I need to see that guy that I saw the first time we put pads on in practice. You know, that's what I brought you here to do, and uh, and ever since then he's been doing it. He didn't play. Didn't play at all. No. Because okay. he, he's got a knee, right? Right. Is he good for this week, do you know? Yeah, he practiced today and, and uh, yesterday. So he'll, he'll play this week. Is that even more praiseworthy for your defense for what they did on uh, on Saturday? I mean, it wasn't just Cole. You, you were down several regulars. There were a lot of new faces back there in the secondary. You, you were down uh, Frazier and Carr didn't play either. Right. Frazier, Carr, um, uh, Sproul. Started at uh, Sturdivant and uh, Cole, neither one of those guys played on the defensive side of the ball that normally plays. So, um, you know, you got to take your hats off to uh, the defense coach staff for getting the other guys prepared, and then you got to take your hats off to the guys that uh, was behind those guys, those guys uh, uh, staying ready to play, waiting for their turn, waiting for the opportunity, and then when their number get called, uh, step up and make plays. You know, um, you know, I preach to them all the time. Nobody's bigger than the team. And we can win and uh, play well without any of them. So, um, you know, I think they understand that now. You know, we we won games and and played well without a lot of people playing. So that 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 humbles you and, and really makes you work hard and understand it is a, a team game. Swilling took a rather nasty hit during the game. Is he okay? Yeah, um, we gave uh, Orr a big hit for that lick he put on him. That was our guy that hit him. A big hit, you know, we have big hit awards. Oh, okay. Yeah, we gave Orr one for putting a hit on Swilling. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, he's all right. He's, uh, he's still in um, concussion protocol. Um, he won't play this week. Because um, Cole was in uniform, right? Yeah, Cole was dressed out. Was he a game time thing? Last week it was, not this week. No, I mean last week. Yeah, last week he was game time. And, and Bethune Cookman, he was game time. He played one series against Bethune and, and couldn't. Um, wasn't 100%, so we took him back out. That's all, folks. Greetings, Hampton Pirate Nation. Jim Heath, Director of Sports Information. Pinch hitting again today for Reverend Barber. We have Hampton Head Coach Connell Maynard with us. And then let's jump right into it. North Carolina Central last week. Typical down to the wire game that we've been having the last Six, yeah. seven weeks. Yeah, we, we, we expected the game to go down to the wire. Um, uh, we expect every last one of them to go down to the wire. This conference has so much parity. Um, every team is pretty much even, and it's going to come down to one or two football plays uh, every game, which has come down to every game so far. Probably the last team with the ball is going to have an opportunity to either tie or win the football game, and um, that's where it was last week. Defense played great. Uh, special teams were solid. Uh, offensively, we moved the ball. 
We just didn't execute it well enough in the red zone and made enough plays to win the football game. Let's talk about the defense for a moment. You had time of the year, all the injury bugs are kicking in. You had four or five starters out, but kept North Carolina Central eight first downs and one offensive touchdown. Yeah, uh, I, I, again, the, the defense played excellent, only giving up eight first downs and two rushing, and one of those rushing was a fake punt. Um, and we had four, four, four starters out, four or five starters out. And so, um, you know, but it's that time of the year where everybody got injuries and people missing. Um, but we had our backups to step up and, and make plays, and, and that's what we've been uh, preaching to them all year is be prepared, uh, don't count your reps, make your reps count. And that's what those guys did Saturday. Those guys made their reps count. Those, those backups, those guys played well. And not only did they play well, they've been doing it all year. They've been working hard. And, and what I told those guys was, um, as long as their grades are good at the end of this semester, uh, those guys both was walk-ons. And we're going to give them a half a scholarship for next semester um, because they deserve it. Yeah. But now let's jump ahead to South Carolina State. Always a tough place to play in Orangeburg with two-time defensive player of the year staring at you and Darius Leonard. Yeah, um, you know, anytime you play a Buddy Pugh coach team and then you got to play them in Orangeburg, um, they're already tough and uh, that just makes it that much harder to go down to Orangeburg and beat them. Then, on top of that, you got to face Darius Leonard, two-time defending defensive player of the year. Probably going to win it again this year. And then it's senior day. So not only all the seniors, but Darius Leonard is going to be pumped up, um, definitely trying to get a win uh, in his last game in that stadium. Uh, so we have our hands full, uh, but I think we'll be up for the challenge. Looking at the weather forecast, it's calling for like a mid-50s and maybe partly cloudy day down there, so that'll be a little encouraging. Yeah, that's, that's fine with us. We, we, we practice in the morning, and it's normally 50 degrees, 55 degrees, so that's right down our alley. Um, to practice in that tight weather. And if it's nice and sunny and warm, uh, we, we'll play in that too, but we, we don't mind it being a little cold. Yeah. We'll wrap up with your usual okay. request to the fans. Well, and you know, the season ain't over with. Uh, we're going to uh, try to win these last two, get to six and two in the conference, seven and four overall, with the outside shot of uh, time first place in the conference. Uh, we need your support. We'd like you to come on out, Orangeburg, South Carolina and give us as much support as you can. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world when the guys see those stands full. The game will be shown online. Uh, links will be up on HamptonPirates.com later today, but we'll end it with the usual. Go Pirates! Go Pirates.